The last episode of The Dev Diary for Assassin's Creed Mirage released a few days ago. And in that new episode, we got tons and tons of new info about the game. We got our first look at the map, the side activities, the side content, and some new stuff that I would like to share with you in this video that you guys might have missed. So let's start the video without wasting any more of your precious time. So as the episode starts, we see developers and they tell us how they created the lost city of Baghdad. We can see their dedication and how much they loved working on this game because they created a city which was lost to time in this game and it's near accurate to what it was back in the day. And this is the thing that I absolutely adore in the Assassin's Creed games. Because no matter how much you criticize these games for not being true to what they were, but they still manage to create settings which all players remember for the ages. Enough of this, let's talk about the map of the game itself. During the mid of the trailer, we got our first look at the map of Baghdad in the game. We see that the map is divided into four major districts. One being Harbia, which the developers even confirmed it will be the most greeny part of Baghdad and will be most fun to explore. And this is pretty much all we got from the developers, no additional info has been revealed yet. Now if we move to the other districts, the two being Habasiya and Karkh, these two were the ones that were mentioned in the gameplay demo for Assassin's Creed Mirage back in June. Now the last district of Baghdad will be the round city and the name explains it all, it will be the circle, the big circle in the middle of the map. The best part about the game will be that we will be able to establish a bureau in each district after each major successive assassination. We got a hint of this thing in the gameplay demo and this particular video confirmed it. Because in this shot of the trailer we see that there are 4 bureaus in each district of the city and it will be refreshing to see progression in such a vital way in the game. Aside from the four districts, we also got our first look at the collectibles in this game. By the looks of it, it seems like the collectible system will be same as Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The whole UI is same as Assassin's Creed Valhalla because obviously this game was going to be a DLC for Valhalla but then it got turned into its own game. So we can expect some similarities between Valhalla and this game. If we look at the collectibles themselves, then these are the types of collectibles that we'll be seeing in the game. If we look at the bottom right corner of the screen, we'll see that there will be gear chests in the game in the district of Harbia, and it will be six particular gear sets that we'll be able to collect. And I think it'll be some kind of similar to Assassin's Creed Valhalla's Hidden One Bureau system where we had to collect the Hidden One's outfit from the bureaus that were scattered around England. But since this game doesn't feature any kind of gear set, so maybe we'll collect outfits from different parts of the district. Next to the gear sets, we have historical sites. After seeing this option, I immediately remembered the Ezio games because in those games, whenever we visited a historical site, the Animus database was updated and we got a little bit of insight on that historical place. This feature was present in approximately all of the Assassin's Creed games until Assassin's Creed Origins which removed the Animus database entirely. But it's great to know that that feature is coming back in Mirage. And since Sean and Rebecca are also back in the Assassin's Creed games after Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so I think that they will also be present in this game. They will update our database after we encounter some unique location in the game and it's a nice callback to the original Assassin's Creed games. After the historical sites and the last option that we saw was Mysterious Shards. I have no idea what this is but it might be related to Basim's memories as the Isu Loki. These mysterious shards remind me of the truth puzzles from Assassin's Creed 2. Maybe Basim will be able to uncover his past life after uncovering these shards so maybe they will tie into the story one way or another. But this is just my speculation, I don't know what will happen or what these shards will be used for. There will also be some form of song sheets in the game. Well, the logo suggests that I don't know what it is, but I don't see the use of the songs here because we don't have any ship or crew that will sing this song for us. But what I personally think is that these song sheets will be outfit dyes or the recipes to dye this particular outfit. Because since this game follows the same system as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so they replace the tattoo designs with outfit dyes. It's what I like to think and I think this will most probably happen in the game. Aside from all of this, another thing that I noticed in this shot of the trailer was the ranking system. 
if you guys watched my previous videos then you would already know that I already covered the topic of the ranking system in this game. And by the looks of it, the level up system is kind of back here in Mirage as well. Since they used the same UI, same mechanics from Valhalla, they couldn't have deleted the whole power system from Valhalla. So what they did instead of the power system was to introduce the ranking system. If we look at the district of Harbia, we'll see that in order to safely free roam in this district and to kill enemies, we need the rank of an initiate. So what I like to think is that the later districts will unlock when we assassinate more targets so our rank will increase and once we reach the rank of the master assassin we'll be able to free roam all of those districts with ease. It's kind of similar to Assassin's Creed Valhalla but less grinding is required for this. But I see no problem with that because in Assassin's Creed 2 we unlocked several portions of the map after progressing in the story so they're kind of bringing this thing back but in a new style and I appreciate it. Other than that, the city of Baghdad will be dense with a lot of cultural diversities because we'll also be able to see Christians, Muslims and some other religions in the same city. It kind of reminds me of Assassin's Creed 1 because in Assassin's Creed 1 there were three different cities with three different religions and I really like that. It really showed that yeah, this city is different from the other one. Now, Baghdad won't be the only place that we'll see in the game. The two locations that have been confirmed so far to be in the game are Baghdad and Alamut. Both of these locations will be different from each other and Alamut will serve as a base for the assassins and where they train. And for us to fast travel to those locations, I think they will use the same system that they used in Assassin's Creed Valhalla because when we pressed Y on our controller in that game, we were designated to a whole new menu where there were three maps shown to us and we used to choose which map we would like to explore and after selecting that particular map the game used to spawn us there and I'm pretty much sure they will be using the same system for Assassin's Creed Mirage and this was pretty much everything new that we got from Assassin's Creed Mirage everything that we saw from start to finish was amazing and it hyped me even more I'm really looking forward for Mirage and I cannot wait to play it on October 5th. I'm really glad they pushed forward the release date because fans cannot wait to play this game. And that was pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. Let me know in the comment section if I missed something. I'll see you guys in another interesting video. Till then, take care and goodbye.